Welcome to iLecture Online, and here we're going to talk a little bit more about coils, the mutual and self inductance, and of course, if we're dealing with a single coil, coil we're dealing simply with self inductance. And now, in particular, we're also going to talk about the energy stored in a coil. Now, the problem here reads, and we'll go ahead and use a problem as an example of how to do this, but the problem here reads, what is the energy stored in a coil with a self inductance of 0.8 henrys when the current through the coil is 12 amps? So, Let's draw a coil and let's find out how this works. So if we have a coil that looks like this with a number of turns, so there's maybe n number of turns, there's a certain cross-sectional area, and uh, at any point in time there's current I running through the coil, right? There we go, there's the current. And there's a self-inductance related to this coil. So we know that the self-inductance L is equal to the number of turns times the flux coming through the turn divided by the current that runs through the coil. So if there's a certain amount of current going through the coil, there'll be a certain amount of magnetic flux through the coil. And let me just kind of draw out the magnetic flux through the coil to get kind of a feel for it. So there's a magnetic field here so that there's a certain amount of flux coming through, magnetic flux coming through the coil. And while that is happening, while there's current going through the coil, there's energy stored in the coil. Hmm, how does that work? Well, let's think about it this way. If the current changes through the coil, then we produce an EMF. And so we can think of it in this way, that the EMF induced is equal to the, um, the number of turns times the change, so the number of turns times the change in the, no, I'm sorry, not the number of turns in this case, in the inductor, it's equal to the self-inductance times the change in the current over time. So we can say that the voltage across a coil at any point in time is equal to the self-inductance times the change in the current through the coil. We also know that the power supplied to a coil or to any device, the power supplied is always equal to the voltage times the current, I. So that's the power supplied to any device, including to a coil. So if we can say that while, let's say that the current I initial starts out at zero, and then I final is equal to I, then while the current is building up through the coil, we're storing energy into it because we're actually supplying power to the coil. Now, if power supplied is equal to V times I, and power by definition is the change in energy over time, we can say that um, the power supplied is equal to this, so, and also we can say that the power is equal to the change in energy over time, and we'll use the letter U for energy. That's the power supplied, it's the energy supplied per unit time. We can also then replace what this is equal to into here. So while the coil is charging up, that's a way to say it, while the, while the current through the coil is increasing, so more and more energy is being stored inside the coil, we can say that the power supplied at any point in time is equal to the EMF induced, which is equal to the self-inductance times the change in the current over time, which is equal to the V here in the equation, times the current I. Now, if we now multiply the P times the DT, if we take the DT over here and we write the power times the DT that is now equal to the self-inductance times I times DI. So simply interchange in the I and the DI. And notice that from this equation we can see that the power times delta T by definition is delta U. So power times DT is actually the change in the energy of the coil at any point in time. So we can now say that DU is equal to L times I times DI. So that is the instantaneous change in the energy of the coil as the current is changing through the coil at any moment in time when you have a certain amount of current in the coil. All right, now if we want to find the total energy stored, we're going to allow the current to go from I equals zero to I equals one, and during that process, we build up the energy, which means that U is simply going to be the integral of all the little du's, which is equal to the integral of the L I times di's from I equals zero to I equal final I. 
All right, since L is, of course, a constant, it's a self-inductance, which is associated with the number of turns, the flux through the coil, when there's a certain amount of current put in the flux in the coil, we could then say that this is equal to L times the integral of I times DI, going from I equals zero to I equals final I. All right, and of course, the integral of I DI is simply I squared over two. So this is equal to L times I squared over two and evaluated from zero to I. And of course, that means then that the energy stored in an inductor is simply equal to L I squared over two. Or we can say that energy is equal to one half the self-inductance times I squared. Now that we know that, we now look at our problem and we realize that the self-inductance of this inductor is 0 0.8 Henry's and that the current in the coil at this moment is 12 amps. So let's plug those numbers in. So U is equal to 1 half times the self-inductance, which is 0 0.80 Henry's times the current, which is 12 amps. And we have to square that. And what do we get? We get 12 squared times 0.8 divided by 2, and that is 500 and, nope, not 576, it's 57.6. I couldn't find the little dot on my calculator. So this is 57.6, and that would be joules. Energy is always in terms of joules. So while there's a current of 12 amps going through our coil that has a self-inductance of 0.8 Henry's, there's at that moment 57.6 joules of energy stored in it. And it's sitting there as long as the current continues to uh, go through the coil at 12 amps, that energy stays there. Now, when the coil tries to decrease, when the, when the current begins to uh, decrease in, in the amount, in the, in the um, value, then the energy will then come back out of the coil and go back into the circuit. So when the current builds up, energy builds up into the coil. When the current goes down, then the coil, the coil then decreases in the energy that it contains. And that's how that works. So there's a nice example of how to calculate the energy stored in a coil.